Let's start by thinking about riding a bike with multiple speeds. In one of the low gears, the bike is really easy to pedal, but you can't go very fast. In one of the high gears, the bike is much harder to pedal, but you can go much faster. So let's say we want to take our bike and drive from our house down the street. Well, it takes a certain amount of energy or work to move our bike from one spot to the other. And it doesn't matter whether someone's pushing you, pulling you, you're driving in low gear or high gear, the amount of work needed to move the bike and the rider remains the same. So let's say it takes 100 units of work to move our bike from one spot to the other. Well, in low gear, it takes us 200 pedals to make that trip. And in high gear, it only takes us 50 pedals to make that trip. So in low gear, each of our time we pedal a bike, we use up one half unit of uh, work. In high gear, each time we pedal a bike, we use up two units of work. Now, gears come in all different sizes and configurations depending on what we need them to do. But what we're really interested in gears is the distance around, the circumference. But in gears, we don't measure that in inches or centimeters. We simply measure it by the number of teeth the gear has. The more teeth it has, the bigger around it is. So let's look at some different gears. Let's say I have a 20 tooth gear turning a 100 tooth gear. Well, the 20 tooth gear is going to have to turn five times to turn the 100 tooth gear one time, and we call that a 5 to 1 ratio. If we had a 25 tooth gear turning the 100 tooth, then it would only have to move, go around four times, or a 4 to 1 ratio. If we had a 50 tooth turning a 100 tooth, it goes around twice, that's a 2 to 1 ratio. And if we had a 100 tooth gear turning another 100 tooth gear, that would be a 1 to 1 ratio. So let's think about our bike again a little bit. Say our low gear is an 8 to 1 ratio. And our high gear is a 2 to 1 ratio. Well, that's one of those things that seems a little backward. That low is 8 and high is 2. But if you think about the amount of work being done, our low gear only has to do a low amount of work, one half unit, to move our bike. Our high gear has to use a much higher amount of work to move our bike. Now in auto racing, often low gears are referred to as short and high gears are referred to as tall. So you might say, or hear someone say, I went to taller gears, meaning they went to a higher gear ratio. All right, now let's look at the gears in a RC car. You'll have a pinion gear that's attached directly to the motor. It turns at the same speed the motor turns. That then turns a spur gear. You'll have a gearbox that has a input gear, an idler gear, and a differential gear or a diff gear that actually turns the wheels. The idler gear actually doesn't affect our gearbox, it just separates the input and diff gears so there's enough room for everything and it also switches the rotation. It makes the diff gear turn in the opposite direction so that everything works correctly. The spur gear is attached directly to the input gear. In fact, they're on the same shaft. So the spur gear and the input gear turn at exactly the same speed. Now the gearbox is all sealed together and you can't change anything in it. So the gearbox ratio always stays the same. So you don't really have to worry about these three gears. You just have to remember what the ratio is. Uh, for this associated gearbox, it's 2.6 to 1. And most gearboxes for RC cars are right around that 2.5 to 1 ratio. So... Since we can't change the gears in the gearbox, we have three options to change the gearing for our car. We can change the pinion gear, we can change the spur gear, or we could change both of those gears. 
Let's look at uh, how we figure out what ratio we actually have. Let's say we have a 20 tooth pinion gear, a 72 tooth spur gear, and a 2.6 to 1 gearbox. Now to figure out what our actual gearing is, which is sometimes called the final drive ratio, we take the spur gear's teeth divided by the pinions, so 72 divided by 20 is 3.6. We multiply that times the gearbox ratio. Ratio, 3.6 times 2.6 is 9.36. So our final drive ratio is 9.36 to 1. We could probably round it to 9.4 to 1. Let's look at some different ways then that we could change that. Let's uh, make some of the gears bigger and see what happens. So if I go from a 72 tooth to a 78 tooth spur gear, I've got 78 divided by 20 is 3.9. 3.9 times 2.6 is 10.14 for a final drive ratio of 10.14 to 1. Notice that by increasing the size of the spur gear, I went to lower or shorter gear ratio. This time, let's increase the size of the pinion gear, going from a 20 to a 22. 72 over 22 is 3.27. 3.27 times 2.6 is 8.51 for a final drive ratio of 8.51 to 1. Notice that this time, by increasing the size of the pinion gear, I went to a higher or taller gear ratio. This time, let's make the gear smaller. So go from a 72 to a 68 to spur gear. 68 divided by 20 is 3.4. 3.4 times 2.6 is equal to 8.84 giving a final drive ratio of 8.84 to 1. This time, by making the spur gear smaller, we went to higher or taller gear ratio. Let's make the pinion gear smaller, going from a 20 to an 18. 72 divided by 18 is four, exactly 4. 4 times 2.6 is 10.4 for a final drive ratio of 10.4 to 1. Notice this time, by making the pinion gear smaller, we went to a higher or shorter gear ratio. Now, in the 21st century, you don't really have to calculate these things yourself. You can go on the internet and find all kinds of charts that look like this one, or even apps to put on your phone that'll do this for you. But if you look at this chart, you'll see that there's a column on the left of green numbers that are pinion gears, and a row of blue numbers on the top that are spur gears. Now, pinion gears usually come in one-tooth increments. You can get every size without any gaps. Spur gears, for most manufacturers, usually come with a three- to four-tooth gap between one size and the next. Now, in your chart, you simply look at the row that's the pinion gear and the column that's the spur gear, figure out where they intersect, and that's where your gear ratio will be shown. So here's our combination of the 72 tooth spur gear and the 20 tooth pinion gear. And here are the other four ratios that we tried. Now most uh, cars, if you look in the manual for them, there'll be a chart something like this that gives you Suggestions for the gear ratios that you should use for a particular size motor. And now if you look at this gear chart, you'll see that all the yellow numbers are within two tenths of a ratio of 10. So if you were shooting for a ratio of 10, there's nothing magic about the two gears that are given on the uh, other chart. You could use any of these combinations to get that ratio. Same thing with the blue numbers, which are all within two-tenths of a ratio of 7 to 1. So it's not necessary that you have every single possible pinion and every single possible spur gear. If you're on a tight budget, you could usually kind of mix and match the gears you have to end up with the ratio that you need. Now there are several things that are affected by the gear ratio in your car. Heat would be one of them. Remember that the higher the gear ratio, the harder your motor is going to have to work. And it's going to get a lot hotter a lot quicker if the gear ratio is higher. 
Well, most uh, manufacturers will give you a limit of about 160 to 180 degrees. You don't really want your motor to get any hotter than that, otherwise you're going to start damaging it. And you can check that with either a uh, uh, infrared thermometer or a uh, simple rule of thumb is if you can reach in and put your finger on the motor and hold it there for three or four seconds, you're probably less than 160 to 180 degrees. If you can't hold your finger there, then your motor's probably getting too hot. The other big thing for the performance of the car for ratios is low ratios, the car will accelerate much quicker, but not go as fast. With a high ratio, it won't accelerate quite as quick, but it'll end up going a lot faster. So if you have two cars, identical cars from a standing start, one with a low ratio and one with a high ratio, then at the very beginning, the low ratio car will probably jump ahead a little bit because it's accelerating faster. But eventually, the high ratio car will be going faster and overpass the low ratio car. So this comes into play depending on what kind of track you're racing on. If you're on one like this with lots of tight turns and short straightaways, your car is going to need to be constantly accelerating. Slowing down for a turn, accelerating to the next one. Slowing for a turn, accelerating to the next one. So you're probably going to want to have fairly low gears. If you're on a dirt oval track like this one, with big wide turns and long straightaways, then your car is going to be going fairly close to full speed all the time. You're not going to need to do a lot of accelerating. So you're probably going to want to have higher gear ratio. Or you could be on a track like this one that's a little bit of both. You got long straightaways, but you also have a lot of tight turns. So there you're going to want to have some kind of a compromise or medium gear ratio. Now, to find the best uh, gear ratio for any particular track, the best thing to do is simply experiment. And a good way to do that is to start with fairly low gears. And as you're doing this process, you always want to keep track of your motor temperatures. You want to keep checking that all the time. So you make some laps and you record the times of your good laps. Uh, you want to do this with either a timing system at a track, uh, with a friend using a stopwatch, something so you're recording the actual times and not just whether or not you feel the car is going faster or slower. And then you can start raising that gear ratio in little steps, checking your motor temperatures until your lap times start to get slower. So if you started with too low of gears, you're going to speed up for a little bit and then start to fall off. Then you can just go back a gear or two um, to find a real sweet spot for your gear ratio, which is going to give you the best lap times. But another important thing to think about is you want to pick a gear ratio where you can run consistent good laps without making mistakes. It doesn't matter how fast your car is going. If you wipe out every lap, you're going to end up running way less laps than you would be if you slowed your car down a little bit and never wiped out. There's some other things that come into play with uh, gear ratios as well. One is a thing called rollout, which simply considers the size of the tires of the car because every time the pinion gear turns a certain amount of times, the wheels, the drive wheels, turn one time. And so the amount of distance that you cover during that one revolution makes a difference in the amount of work. The farther you move it, the more work you have to do. So, for example, a short course truck moves about 13 inches every time the tires go around once. A stadium truck about 11.8 inches, a buggy about 10.2 2 inches, and a touring car about 8.6 inches. So, for example, if you compare the short course and the touring car, short course has to go a long, lot longer distance in one revolution of the wheels than the touring car. So the short course truck is going to need a much lower gear ratio than the touring car. Now, generally this isn't something you'd have to worry about a lot because short course tires are pretty much all the same size. 
touring car tires are pretty much all the same size, so they're something that really never changes. However, if you did something like put stadium truck tires onto your short course truck, you would probably want to lower the or raise the gear ratio a little bit to compensate for the fact that you just added smaller tires. Other thing that uh, comes into play with uh, ratios is weight. The heavier the car is, the more work it takes to move it down the track. So if you could lighten up your car, make it do less work, you could probably go to slightly higher gear ratio, make it go a little faster. However, if you had to add some stuff that made the car heavier, like weights for cornering, then you might consider lowering the gear ratio a little bit to compensate for the fact that the heavier car is now harder to move down the track. 